Hello and welcome back to part 2 of my Voron 1.8 build. If you haven't seen part 1 yet, or part 0 because I didn't build anything, have a look back at that. It'll make a bit more sense rather than just watching this one. Unless you already know about Voron and what it is and know that you definitely want one and are just interested in somebody's build of one. Um, very quick video today. Just going to go through some of the bits that I've got together so far. A lot of you will say you're wearing the same t-shirt and your room looks the same. I recorded them together. What I have so far, this is now my Voron box of goodies. It's getting fuller and fuller by the day. Deliveries are starting to roll in from China. Took about a week, I think, just a seven or eight days for the first delivery. Um, I have my bags full of printed components. And like I say, printed on an Ender 3 behind this blanket over here. Are they brilliant? No, they're not brilliant. But you know what? They're fairly solid. And, you know, I'm quite impressed by the quality of them, to tell you the truth. Considering I was, oh, I can't print ABS before I, you know, tried this. And as you can tell, black and yellow. We're going to call the printer Bumblebee. Uh, like I said last time, eSun ABS Plus is what the black is. And that is printed much cleaner, much nicer. It's required less cleaning up, and I've had less things coming off the build plate, forming horrible, horrible edges. Um, more and more, everything has to be in a bag, and everything has to be over the label on. That's my issue, don't worry. It's like all these over here, they've got labels on. Sad. Other thing, and again this goes back to something I mentioned before, is why order from elsewhere if you can order local? So, I went to somewhere called ComponentShop.uk, um, they did make a slight mistake with the order, they were apologetic, fixed it straight away. You can't actually ask more than that. If something goes wrong, it's how a company deals with it, not the fact that something went wrong. People are people. We all make mistakes. So I've got lots of wire. I've got um, the 24 um, AWG, which is for um, lots of your electronics, so your sensors and that sort of thing. Um, I've got the 20 gauge AWG which is for the I want to say the heating element and I also bought while I was there some 16 gauge as well because I always like to err on the side of caution where there's going to be a lot of current flowing so or a lot of high voltages so on my mains input side if I'm going to have lots of things that have got bits going where I can I like to over spec my wire because that should never be the weakest point in an electrical circuit you know you can put a fuse in all you want but if your wire is going to burst into flames and start melting before your fuse goes no point having your fuse you may as well not bother talking of that what i do have as well and this is something i definitely would not order from china i would get from a i'm not saying they're disreputable i would get from a trusted source and by that i mean somewhere in the uk like farnell cpc uh, same company, RS Components, um, or somebody with an international reputation like DigiKey, possibly Mouser, someone like that. So I have here my, should have opened the box beforehand, my 24 volt Meanwell LRS supply. Um, disclaimer, I think in the UK above a certain wattage or a certain power, you should be using the RS power supplies. Uh, or RSPs rather than the LRSs is something around the uh, passive deadening about things but Meanwhile is a very respected brand I'm also quite into Christmas lighting hence I have lots of little circuit boards and fun things over here to play with Meanwhile power supplies are what are recommended the world over for that hobby and I've come into building my own 3D printer and it's exactly the same. In fact, the first thing I did with my uh, Ender 3 when I was modding it head heavily was I actually added a Meanwell power supply to it because it runs overnight. It runs when I'm sleeping. I don't want a lightweight, cost-cutting, corners-cut power supply putting out lots of amps while I'm sleeping in the next room. Thank you very much. So, nice Mimo Trusted. Always make sure that the select switch on the side is actually for your local voltage. 
especially if you got it from somewhere with an international element to it like uh, DigiKey like I did. The only thing I would say about these is if you've got a 3D printer, print one now. If you haven't got a 3D printer, as soon as you build your Voron, build a little cover because by default, these come with the connections there. And for me, that and that will be 230 volts AC. Well, give or take, British house wiring is a little bit, it's there or thereabouts. And you don't want accidental contact, you don't want to be, oh, I'll just feel around under the printer because I need to move something, and you don't want to be doing that. That's bad things, bad things. Other things that I've got, um, I've got a little Sonoff Mini, but that's because I'm going to mount that in the bottom just to turn the printer on and off, just to keep things nice and neat. Um, spade crimp connectors, you will need those, and the reason you will need those is for the back of the wiring plug, just to uh, connect stuff up to. And my one take was ruined by Alexa going off to remind me that I better go and collect my wife soon, otherwise I'm going to be in trouble. Um, a printout for where to drill the build plate. Um, as of the time I was ordering, you couldn't get a build plate prepared in this country. I think people are looking into that now, and I know once Fermio Labs are shipping to the UK again, they do a universal build plate, so it's drilled for a 2.4 and for a 1.8. Me, I've had to go to a company called Metal X. A uh, guy there called Steve was very helpful. Um, I'll link him down in the description. But yeah, I'm getting the cast aluminium. Cast, not rolled, because if you heat and cool rolled aluminium, you're, you're going to end up in all sorts of hell because of the uh, thermal expansion and contraction. But so, again, the point I made before about really good design elements. Can I get that to yeah, focus? That's one of the draw technical drawings that's in the uh, Voron Design GitHub that basically measures out and tells you exactly where you want to put your holes for your bed. I've got a pillar drill and all sorts of gubbins because I've got far too many things kicking around, so drilling the aluminium isn't really going to be an issue for me. I know some people may find that a little bit intim intimidating. Hopefully there'll be a solution by then. Something not on the bill of materials is your Vital Red RTV, an Amazon purchase for me. This is kind of used as an extra safety when applying your uh, heated bed to the bottom of the aluminium. Just put a bead of this around the outside to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. So if the adhesive that's actually on your uh, silicon heater pad fails, it doesn't just drop off and start melting your printer. Um, it's got kind of a safety backup and you also will use this to put the thermal uh, fuse not screwed to the bed like the assembly instructions tell you the current thinking is well actually use your RTV stick that to the back of the silicon heating mat because again you you want it to trip that fuse if there's a thermal runaway on your heating mat and if your thermal runaway means that the adhesives come away it's no good your thermal fuse being on a bed you know six inches from a heating mat that's slowly uh, burning itself away and melting your 3D printer. A couple of other bits, and again, something not to cheap out on is your solid state relay, your SSR. This controls the, takes the logic level out of our Raspberry Pi, which should have arrived today and didn't. I'm gonna have to get onto the Pi Hut. Again, use local. Pi Hut are quite supportive for the Pi community in general, so I try and use them, and you know what? They're actually about 15 quid cheaper than Amazon were for a Pi 4 2 gig, and they had it in stock. But sorry, SSR takes the logic level from the Pi, converts that into the AC current, because for Vorons, because of the size of the build plate, unlike things like your Ender 3, where you're going to drive your, build, uh, your heating mat on 24 volts, we actually use mains voltage for these, and that's kind of the interface between Pi level logic and... Uh, your local voltage. Yes, my first bit from China was my screen. Doesn't actually do very much at the minute because there's nothing to plug it into because I still haven't got a control board for it. Threadlocker Blue is recommended on the bill of materials. I couldn't find it and have bought myself a cheap Chinese version that's in a tube rather than a stick. Turns out you get it in Halfords. 
again, that uh, Brexited channel in Discord is the source of lots of knowledge. Then the only other bits and pieces I've got are one 3D printed thing from the user mod, and that's for lining up your rail. So you put your corner rail in, I can't see it down there, put your corner rail in here, put your side rails on and tighten them up while you're pushing down so that everything's nice and level. I have my one BAT85 diode, which isn't showing up again because of that light, but there we go. Whole 30p or whatever it was. Engineer square. Take your time when you're building, square it up. That's what I've been told to do, and I did a similar thing when I was building up my Ender 3. If you keep it square, it saves you trying to solve headaches later on. And the only other thing in here is stepper motors. Um, the bill of materials will link you stepper online motors. Uh, sorry, the sourcing guide will link you stepper online motors. If you go to the stepper online website, you can actually filter, and I found three of the five stepper motors I need in the UK warehouse. So I ordered these on a Sunday night. On on Wednesday, I had a knock at the door from the uh, post lady, and lo and behold, stepper motors from Royal Mail that have come from, I'm not quite sure where their warehouse is, but somewhere in this country, you know it's a, a decent thing, it's not a knockoff with a cheap silkscreen print on the side like components can be from less reputable sources. Um, yeah, you don't have to go to AliExpress for everything. Like I say, not much really to build, but I've got some bits and pieces and as you can see with this, I have started to put a few, a few bolts here and there just to put things together. The main thing I'm really waiting for at the minute is my heat set inserts. And the Royal Mail tracking site tells me that customs have been sat on them since Monday. Today's Wednesday? It's a bank holiday weekend, it's all blurred into one. Um, yeah, so customs have been sat on them. I don't, why they're taking such interest in those when there's all sorts of things I've had shipped to me in the past that, as far as I know, have not spent two days sat in customs? Who knows? Hopefully they'll be here soon. Again, if I knew now what I, if I knew then what I knew now, I'd have never ordered them from the other side of the world. I'd have ordered them from Tic Tac Tech, or from Mechporium, which are UK-based shops that have UK-based stock that are also Voron enthusiasts. So I know I'm going to get the right thing instead of going. I think this is the size I want out of the Great Big AliExpress page, but. Is what it is. Hopefully next time I talk to you, I'll have a frame and uh, I'll tell you what went wrong when I tried to put that together. Uh, until then, yeah, hit like, subscribe if you want to watch the next one when it comes along. Uh, if not, let me know and I won't bother. Talk to you soon. Bye. Just a quick update because we've had some more posts uh, today. Um, got all my bits through from Triangle Labs. So we've got the Dragon Hot End. This is the high flow one because, as you'll see, I've already done something to the normal one. These are the Triangle Labs ones. They're really, really nice, these dragons. I quite like them. Um, some spare tips. Um, also, the heat cartridge and the, the misters for it because it doesn't come with them, unlike, say, an Ender 3 kit would. Uh, DIN rails, just some Bowden tube, just for the little bit you need. I have got some little LED um, high density white strip purely for providing a nice white even light inside so I can see what's going on. Um, also got linear rails and the straight rods. Uh, I haven't tried these out for flatness yet by rolling them. Uh, job still to do. I still left them in there. They stink of packing grease and until I get some actual proper lubricant so I can clean them, lubricate them and put them in the frame, which isn't here yet. Kind of no point. Uh, we do have the magnetic build plate and the magnetic build bed from Energetic, who did put the Voron logo on for me. Um, very accommodating of them. When you order it on AliExpress, just ask them to do it. And sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But yeah, like I say, I did actually have a play over here with what the other dragon that I've got and fitted it in. I discovered that these fittings here are really, really quite temperamental and I've broken both of them already. So the printer's going over there to print a new version out. Um, 
and the clockwork I put together as well. I did have to fiddle around with the BMG gear a little bit just to get him kind of right. I do need, I think, maybe another M5 washer just to kind of space him out from the bearing a little. But he works, and I'm very impressed by this. This is kind of this lovely kind of snap in here, so your filament goes in nice and easy, and then you snap it down to get the tension. He says nice and easy. There we go. Then snap it down, got the tension, and then you can just wind the thumb gear to wind it up and down. It's it's a lovely design and I third time lucky reprinting the front. The first time it ended up with bits of black filament in. Second time it lifted off the print bed but third time lucky on that front. Um yeah I should have had a build plate today but yeah FedEx still aren't here and it's a uh, after eight o'clock at night and I think those buggers ain't coming. Um See you next time. Bye.